in the previously uh, the the cliffhanger ending of the previous demo where I didn't know what was going to happen next um, and couldn't figure things out. Um, basically, we had gotten to a point where we had a sphere um, and we had, I'm going to leave it there, um, and um, we had applied hair to it and we were going through and looking at how to use really the generate tab on the hair object to instead of using the hair engine to render hairs to actual actually render geometry with that basically follows those hairs as though they're splines um, and so let me get that set up real quick and we'll get going so simulate hair objects add hair there's now hair on the sphere and if I play this it should droop perfect that's exactly what I want um, so then um, on the hair object, there are right a bunch of different attributes that you can set. And um, we talked through this, right? You, the number of guides is kind of automatically generated based on your number of vertices on your object. The hairs, you can set how many hairs you want over the total surface. Um, 50,000 is the default. The number of segments is going to right, how smooth or any sort of articulation that happens in the hair. Um, but the one we're really looking at right now is the generate tab. Um, the first option on the generate tab is whether or not you want to render the hairs and this additional geometry that you're creating. In our case, we do not want to render the hairs. Um, and then there's the type. And we had gone through some of these um, basically Spline allows you to take any spline and use it to create a sweep along the length of the hair. Um, flat is like a flat hair. I don't know how else to describe it. Triangle and square and circle, which for some reason don't show up all at the same time. Yeah, there's some fun stuff here um, that happens. Um, allow you to uh, do, um, what am I trying to say? Um, basically, they let you choose like a different shape hair, like a square or a triangle or circle. Um, instance is the one that we were having issues with. Sweep is similar. I think you can actually plop a sweep in there that you've already made, and it will use it as though it's a hair. Instance um, is the one that was problematic. I was trying to add objects to do, and they were not showing up. And the reason was really simple. I was creating primitives like, say, let's just say a tube um, that in this case is really huge. So I'm going to change the um, outer radius down to something small, maybe leave the inner radius there and make the height a little bit bigger so we can actually see it. Um, and right now I'm gonna leave all the segments and everything alone um, in, their, in their current state. Um, but the issue was that um, when I went to go ahead and add this as the object by clicking on the little thing here and clicking on the tube, it lets me add the tube, but then if I go to play this or even look at the viewport or render it, right, there's nothing there. And it's all because it's a primitive and it's not a polygon mesh. I did not make it editable. And so if I make it editable, then some cool things start to happen. I am going to increase the number of height segments um, to like, I don't know, I'll do like 30. Um, because that's, granted it'll make the simulation run slower, but it's gonna be a lot smoother bending when this happens. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit C to make my tube editable. I'm gonna go to hair. It should have updated. I might have to clear I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and add it back um, because I think that was probably, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh, I know why it's so small right now, but we'll, so if I play this, it's taking forever for some reason, right? And that's because I probably put too many, oh boy, I may have crashed it entirely. This is a doomed tutorial. Um, absolutely doomed. Um, yeah, I totally just crashed cinema hard. I wonder if on the tube I accidentally put in 300. 
Maybe I shouldn't have made that adjustment. All right, well, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. All right, well, at least it woke back up again, and hopefully it is not trying to render a new frame. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit maybe. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna do anything. I have no idea why <laughs> there's that many. Hold on one second. Um, so I'm gonna click on the hair object. I'm gonna come down to the guides. It should be 152. Ah, okay, so I had forgotten. Yeah, um, the generate tab doesn't go off how many guides you have, it goes off how many hairs. So it's drawn 50,000 tubes um, right now. So let's go ahead and make this equivalent to the number of guides. Let's just do 152. It should go a lot faster. There we go, right? So I have 152 hairs. Now, the first thing I want you to note is that even though my base tube is pretty huge, right, these are absolutely tiny. Um, and that's because my hair material, um, oh, what did I just do? Oh, boy, wrong button. There we go. Um, it, my hair material is controlling the thickness of the tubes that are being drawn along the hairs. So if I go to the thickness here, you'll see it's one centimeter. Well, if you can actually see the screen because we have such great projectors. Um, it's one centimeter to one-tenth of a centimeter. So if I want this to remain... I don't remember how big I made the tube, but I'm just going to say, let's just say 10 centimeters. And I'm going to put the end at 10 as well. So then it is like a tube that actually stays the same dimensions over its length. And you'll see right now, except for this one big one, which is the, the um, which is this, um, they are much more tuby. Um, and so if I go ahead and play this animation, now all those tubes right, drop and droop and do exactly what the hair does. They'll respond to any forces if you had wind or whatever else in here that was blowing the hair around. Um, all of that would be, um, the geometry would, would react to that. So if I was to come here and go to, is it under dynamics? The hair is, where is it? Hair to hair force objects. I thought there was just, I thought I could just throw some wind in there easy, but probably, but I guess not. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, but yeah, so right, so I can have this set up. So this is just one copy of this tube, I believe, um, right, that are all drooping and falling in whatever way, shape, or form we want them to. If I go to the generate tab, um, if, if I go to the generate tab, all right, and hide this, here we go, and zoom in. All right, so um, there's a couple other options here, which I'm going to try and show and show part of the model at the same time. Um, first, there's what axis you want it to be aligned to. If I click X, <laughs> they're all going to go flat. Um, if I do Z, they should all go flat, oh, I guess, in the same direction. Um, but if I do Y, right, that's basically the orientation I want to use. There's occasions when you want to use the other ones, but not in this case. Um, the deform, you can say no, <laughs> you're not going to deform it. And basically the objects just show up wherever the um, hairs would be and they point up in the Y direction. I think I can also get them in the like Z direction or the X direction, right? So they're all, I don't know, I mean maybe speed lines, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to say... Um, the other option is just a line, which basically just means no matter, you'll notice the guides are all curvy and everything, but the hairs are just pointing, these tubes are just pointing straight out. So this is kind of an easy way to get a whole bunch of objects aligned with the surface of your object. Um, you wouldn't have to do, you know, you just have your guides kind of hanging out there. Um, but usually bend is what people want to do um, with this. Um, it, the, you, there's several options. There's keep the aspect ratio. There's uniform, which basically means they're all going to be about the same length. You'll notice some of them have pulled away from the surface now, um, and that's based on these hairs being slightly different lengths, or maybe they're all away from the surface. Um, but it basically makes sure they're all the same length. 
Um, the hierarchy, we're only using one object, so it doesn't matter, but you can have a group with several objects and you could have them basically randomly oriented or uh, whatever. Um, oh, and then fit um, basically fits this to the length of the hair. So if I was to go back to my hair material and go to length and turn that on and set my variation, I don't know, to 50%, um, then some of them are going to be substantially shorter and some will be substantially longer. Um, they'll be guided by the hair. The other thing that you can do in the Generate tab, um, you can set um, a number of repeats. So if I wanted like a segmented, I don't know, like Dr. Octa Dr. Octopus or Dr. Octavius, uh, like two arm things, I don't know, right? You can do that and you get these nice little seams in there. Um, by setting the repeat, you can adjust the start and end point. So if I, for some reason I only wanted these to go 50% of the length, um, I can do that. This is an animatable feature, so right, I could very easily have them grow over time if I wanted to keyframe that. Um, you know, there's um, anything, by the way, we haven't, because it's not an animation class, we haven't talked about this. Anything with this little diamond shape next to it means you can set a keyframe and animate it. Some of them are switches, right, on and off, like, you know, you could switch it from the deform to bend to a line, or maybe it's a line to bend at some point in the animation. Other ones, if they're numerical like this, you can set a zero value and then go to one or 10 or 15 and it'll do it over time, um, which is pretty cool. Um, the alignment, um, I honestly tried using this and there may be, Oh, look why I kind of changed it. Look X. It, it, like, it, I, what I've seen is it's like a minor adjustment to how these are all aligned. Um, I don't know if there's like a decent, you know, if there's one or another way that would make more sense than another. Free seems to be fine. Um, the other thing, uh, e even though I have the thickness here set um, 10 to 10, right? You can taper this, so I could have this be two at the end, and then I get this tapered tube that slowly goes down to that hollow tip. Um, the other thing to note is, right, there's no material, if I render this, the hair color does not come through at all. Um, I need to create a second material, um, which I can do here, and then I can apply, you know, whatever color um, and if I want it to be, I don't know, more reflective or something, I could do this so that it's actually um, there. I can, then I would drop this onto the hair material or the hair object. Um, and then those, that geometry will have whatever material I apply to it. Um, you can also then make this all editable if you get it into a pose you like. Um, and then just instead of having to generate it over and over again, it can be locked in that position. Or you can do whatever the heck else you want to do with that geometry. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to end this on a high note <laughs> after failing so hard on Wednesday. Um, yeah, so just because it's a really cool feature and it's a lot of fun to take different objects in there. There's, um, I've seen other demos and other people use it to like make a forest of simple trees that kind of, if you make, set the stiffness higher and stuff, you can get them to like wiggle and kind of have like a really playful motion. Um, and it's just a nice way to create multiples and all that. So that's just what I wanted to show in case anyone needed to like have many, many tentacles that, I don't know. Hang, um, and we had talked about g gravity and all of that too. So, um, where right now they're you know they're all falling down and looking like hedgehog spikes. Um, you can uh, under the dynamics, or no, under forces you can adjust gravity. So I could set this to like negative one. So there's barely any gravity whatsoever. Um, and then run this through, right? And it'll be a much more gentle um, yeah, 
uh, like a much more gentle thing. You can add other forces in here. Um, yeah. And that's it. Um, the rest of the time is yours to work. I'm going to come around and meet with everyone um, and see how you're doing on your projects. Yes, sir. And I'm going to stop this before I